Hello and welcome to Give and Take, The Virtues in Life. And today's topic is Foster Kids United. And we have a wonderful guest and she will tell us her name and share about this wonderful organization that she started. So welcome. Thank you very much for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Okay. I'm Tanya Cooper and I'm the president of Foster Kids Unite Incorporated. And what we do is provide non-traditional services to aged out foster youth. Okay. Um, not just to the West, we, we say the Westchester area, but technically, I mean, kids go to college all over. Mm -hmm. So um, as long as the youth is aged out of foster care, which means they have to leave because they turn 18 or 21. Right. Um, and they're in college or trade school mm -hmm. or taking classes, uh, we usually try to help them with mentoring, gift boxes, scholarships. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and we have a cookie angel who sends them treats every month. I like cookie angels. Yes. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Now, I had met you at uh, this event. It was in, um, oh, yes. Uh, yes, at the Tarrytown. Uh, Tarrytown, Marriott. Marriott. that's Marriott. it, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, you were actually being honored there. So tell us a little bit about that. That was really amazing. It I mean, was nice. I was, was not expecting event. all that. Oh, you was not? Uh, no, it was like 500 people. And then, yes. uh, and then the proclamation, you know, not just the proclamation, but then to put it on the Westchester County Center, you know, the little uh, marquee there. Oh, yes, yes, They put yes. that on. Oh, so that's nice. So September 24th is Tanya Cooper Day. Oh! It's like, wow, I get my own day. Yes, and lovely. I, yeah, it's, uh -huh. it was amazing. And um, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, it was amazing more so to be up there with such amazing women like uh, Miss uh, uh, Linda um, Bagley okay. uh, and uh, the other young lady um, who was an attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was very honored to uh, even be in the same realm and, mm -hmm. and in a room with 500 great women, I consider. It was 500? I, yeah, <laughs> there lot, was at least yeah. 500 guests. The, okay. I, the tables uh, looks like about 500. Okay. And I was told that that's how many were invited. Mm. And did you see an empty seat? No, it was amazing. It yeah. was the first time I've ever been to something like that. Oh, uh, this is um, my second one. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it was quite uh, very well done. It was there. And they, that takes a lot to host such a large event. Yes. It yes. was very, very well done, and I really enjoyed myself and meeting you. Yes, it was such a pleasure, too. Yes. I mean, yes. everyone I met in the room uh, had some form of brilliance or another mm -hmm. um, in that they were helping people. Um, I'm really big on charity work, so right. that's my thing. Um, uh, or they were doing, you know, something with the community, just mm -hmm. something. Um, and I, I, I couldn't believe it. I was in a room full of people that were like that. Right. So it was such an honor just to even be there mm -hmm. and to, um, you know, to see so many women um, that are just doing it. Right. So it was very exciting. Excellent. So tell us why you got started with this organization. Well, Foster Kids Unite um, started about nine years ago um, unofficially. You know, and what we did was we just set out to find um, my brother. My brother passed away t ten years ago, mm -hmm. about ten years ago now, near June tenth, uh, two thousand nine, uh, of heart disease at forty one. Mm -hmm. It was a shocker to me. Okay. I grew up in the foster care system since I was five years old. Okay, right. So my mom was a heroin addict, unfortunately, um, but I loved her, and she was great for doing what she had to do mm -hmm. for us to survive. Right. Because in my house, you know, we didn't have lights, food, water. So that whole thing, uh, neglect is what they call it, mm -hmm. um, was not a good not a good space to be in uh, for young kids. There was four of us. Right. And so, well, eventually four of us. My brother Mark was born, like, I think about a month before we went to actual care. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so I was a foster child um, is the reason why I started it. Uh, and I always remembered, you know, when people were kind to me mm -hmm. or giving me a helping hand. Um, and as I got older, um, I went to NYU uh, and graduated with my BAS in communications from Steinhardt. Uh, and there was a, a Quaker woman who would help me with books and other mm. extra things that come up. Yeah. Um, and I remember taking the test uh, at my finals in December, mm -hmm. and everybody uh, had get, had um, a box come to them for that their parents signed for in advance, allegedly. I didn't even know about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were sitting there eating their apples and their snacks and... I'm sitting there, my stomach's gr 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 growling away <laughs> yeah. while we were like trying to dredge out this little final. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make sure that if there's a kid in foster care that's in college, mm -hmm. that I will try to find one or two that I could help so that they won't be embarrassed like me. Um, mm -hmm. So that was where the initial, like, okay, let's get it going. I've been thinking about it mm -hmm. um, because like I said, my brother and I, we stayed together of the four of us. Okay. Two were separated, one was adopted, my brother Mark, red hair and freckles. He was adopted off quick. Mm -hmm. um, I've been looking for him since he was three years old. 
Um, mm -hmm. And he was actually adopted right down the street in Elmsford. Okay. So we, we grew up in Bedford Hills. Um, so it's weird, who knows how I'll find him. But yeah. anyway, long story short, um, to get to the point, um, my brother, um, when he died, um, before he had died, we had talked about you know, how can we help kids? And I was like, well, I'm gonna do it when I'm rich and famous, because <laughs> I've always wanted to be in Carol Burnett, Johnny Carson, and Lucille Ball shoes since I was this high, since I remember ever seeing them on television, because okay. I love making people laugh, mm -hmm. and so I do comedy as a side gig. Right. Um, and I know that when you make people laugh, then pain's not so bad. Mm -hmm. So long story short, um, I wanted to uh, do that, but I was like, I have no money, and blah, blah, blah. All the reasons mm -hmm. you make excuses sure, why yeah. you can't help somebody else. So my brother said to me, um, I think it was about two weeks before he died. I read my book that I wrote for, um, for the foster kids, a self-help book. And he said, Coop, you got to get that book out there because mm -hmm. that's going to save or change lives. And don't wait till you're famous because that may never happen. Right. So his friend was like, listen, when she found out he died through the newspaper, she got together with me, uh, Megan Castellano is her name. She's uh, she's uh, amazing, amazing uh, amazing lady. Mm -hmm. uh, she was friends with him during middle school and high school. Mm -hmm. So she said, well, I'll help, I'll help out. You right. know, um, I'll, help, I'll put up the scholarship if you find the kid. Mm -hmm. So I was like, that's easy, because I know a lot of social workers. Right. Just by way of me working in the substance abuse fields, the Case Act T, um, me working in the school districts, I've always worked around kids somehow mm -hmm. or another. So I always keep numbers handy. Um, so anyway, we started Foster Kids Unite um, because we kept getting people who wanted to give us money and we're like, it can't take $25,000, can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we're not a nonprofit. We're, we're just trying to help one kid, you know, at a time. Right. And so we decided if we can help more kids, why not? So mm -hmm. we made it official, 501c3, not for profit ex um, exempt uh, in 2014, mm -hmm. I would say. Great. Yeah, to help mm -hmm. more kids. Um, and again, we provide scholarships, gift boxes, mentoring, and um, uh, cookies uh, monthly or baked items monthly with a card mm -hmm. or your birthday. That's nice. Yeah. So you have your book there, um, yes. Tanya, if you mm -hmm. want to just, uh, yep. Yes, Surviving Foster Care, up. Making yeah. It Work mm -hmm. For You. Good. Yes. So Surviving Foster Care, and Making It Work For You. Mm -hmm. So tell us just a little bit because you want people to buy the book so we're not going to give too much away, right? Right, that's right, <laughs> that's true. It is okay. a self-help guidebook um, mm -hmm. that hopefully helps Foster youth uh, navigate through the system. Mm -hmm. um, just quick, fast, in a hurry. As Oprah would say, it's the awe moment okay. um, that I came to um, in my 50s when I was like, I, and I was like, I wish I had known this when I was like 17, 16. Mm. It's been so much easier on my life. Um, and then there was things I thought that social workers and police officers, anyone who works with foster kids or interact with them in any manner mm -hmm. um, should know. So I just packed it all in that book. Um, and I believe it's a hundred and it's only, um, yeah, it's like 114. Technically it's less than that because mm -hmm. you, you know, the forward for right, 122 exactly. pages, okay. go, give or take. Mm -hmm. um, and so I packed my personalized story uh, in there um, because I wanted people to read the book uh, and either feel mm -hmm. what a foster child feels right. the moment they go into a system. That's great. Or uh, if it's a child, foster child reading it, I wanted them to know that I feel what they're going through. That's great. So, That's fantastic you know, that you did so, something like that to really educate people on the needs of children in foster care. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Know, you. It's a, definitely a book that needs to be purchase yes because it gives you a best because you're speaking from a perspective of being in that in the same shoes yes. so you would understand and have empathy and be able to elaborate in regards to how it works Absolutely. so that's great because a lot of the time people do things like, mm -hmm. let me say not a lot of the time Absolutely. but sometimes uh, we do things with good intentions yes. but if you haven't actually stepped in the same shoes as that person yeah. then because I'm seeing what's happening is is that they're doing a lot of peer mentoring. Yes. So experiential, and this way you can empathize and understand and connect with the person better. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. Yes, no, it, it definitely does. I, I, know, I remember also as a foster child, hearing from people that were never in foster care, and that used to tick me off. Mm. I'm like, you cannot tell me how you feel about your mother dropping you off someplace right. to some strangers that you don't know. Right. And I was sexually abused while I was in foster care mm. from like nine to 15. So right. I have another extra layer on top of it. 
You know, mm. yeah, I did over 30 years of therapy. I got through it. I worked through it. It's mm -hmm. also in the book to help okay. those kids that are cutters, mm -hmm. um, suicidal, yes. mm -hmm. you know, some maybe homicidal. I mean, because, you know, mm -hmm. when they age out of foster care, you figure, well, originally the stats was 530-something thousand kids are in foster care in the United States. But the numbers keep fluctuating. And I can tell you how that happens is mm -hmm. that they may not consider your grandmother taking care of you or your aunt or your cousin oh, okay, foster right. care. Yes. But I still consider foster care because you're it's still a getting form a check. Of foster care, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you're still getting a check. So to me, we need to keep those numbers real. You yes. Know? Mm -hmm. uh, so approximately 400, they may say now, maybe 350,000, they'll say, because of that uh, mm. factor. But uh, 30,000 a year age out of foster care. That means they mm. leave, they're old enough, they have to leave. New York State has 21, uh, Ohio used to have 18, it may be changing. Mm -hmm. California had 18. Right. Uh, but I started seeing a lot of kids uh, aging out and committing suicide mm. or ended up pregnant or homeless. And it's like, why? So nobody's tracking none of these kids, mm -hmm. which, I mean, I guess it would be costly. Mm -hmm. But Foster Kids Unite, we aim to raise the stats of how many youth actually get to college, much less graduate college. Because right now it's 3% or less. Mm -hmm. That's really low. Yeah, um, it's, it's just, um, it's quite uh, tragic that um, these kinds of situations, I mean, they happen for different reasons, yes. but um, it's tragic when a child, like you say, such as yourself, you were so young. Yes. And then to go through the abuse that you went through and then have to deal with that. But I'm glad that you went through therapy and uh, you found different ways for yourself yes. to get through it. So let's talk a bit about you being the comedian. Well, that I, I started because, uh, again, I was being abused and nobody knew it and I couldn't tell anybody because mm. the threat always is, I'm going to kill your brother. And then when you when that lapse after a few years, you're like, eh, they're not going to do nothing. Mm. I'll tell. Then they'll say something like, well, go ahead and tell because now uh, you'll be separated from your brother. So to alleviate all that, mm. Mm -hmm. I literally just built a mental block and said nothing will, will, um, nothing will affect my brain. You know, right. may mess up all this. But, but my brain cannot, it, you know, I, I knew, I didn't even know what God was, but I knew someone was protecting me, uh -huh. um, always. I, don't, I can't even explain to it. And then I lucked out and ended up with a mom, foster mom who's a minister. <laughs> so mm. that, that was a double blessing. Um, even in spite, people say, oh, well, didn't she know? No, she didn't know. If she knew, do you think it would happen? I mean, right. really, you know, could she have handled it different when, when it was found out? Yeah, mm. I ended up staying there three years after, but that's because she knew that it would, wouldn't happen again because now everybody knows. Right. Uh, so, and she's right. If she would have worded it differently, let's say, um, all the kids would have had to go back to the orphanage that they came from. And for some of them, that was really bad. Mm -hmm. That was not a good, that you can't, it's like, it's like taking an animal out of the wild, mm -hmm. bringing him or her into your home, living there for like 10 years, mm -hmm. and then saying one day in the dead winter, put him back in the, the you know, the Amazon River, the Amazon right. forest. It's like, right. you know, it's mm -hmm. <laughs> good luck with that. It's yeah, not going to work. You have to weigh up the pros and cons in these situations. What will be the best uh, thing? Yes. Uh, Tanya, we're going to look at the first image. Um, we have some photos. Okay, oh, and there you are. <laughs> that's yes. me at Levity Live. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was fun. Um, I did some mics there, and I did a show, uh, and that was, that uh, I think that night was uh, for a taping for some gentleman, Rodriguez, for an HBO special. Um, mm -hmm. So I opened up. Um, so I was good that my I didn't I didn't bomb as they say my <laughs> first five minutes. So it was good, you know. Excellent. I, yeah, it was fun. Good, yeah. good. Yeah. And we will look at the second image. We'll see what that. Okay. Oh, that's from the '80s when I used to model. Okay. Um, that is in New York, but I eventually did go to Paris and model. Uh, oh. With, I was with Wilhelmina for briefly oh, here in New York, right. yeah, no, and then over there I was with an agent called Diva, uh -huh. and one in London called American. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, that was short-lived. My runway couture career. Let's <laughs> couture. This one I was a size three ago. <laughs> You know, uh, <laughs> three. Yeah. yeah, the cheekbones were really there. Yes, they were, they yes. were coming out. Right, yeah. right. But uh, that was, those were good times. That actually was shot on 23rd Street and 10th Avenue by the projects. Oh, I don't okay. know if you know, but back in the 80s, that used to be where all the prostitutes used to hang out on this right by this mm, underpass right, type of thing. Uh, uh. Some it's really like shady. Now it's great, right. but back then it was really shady area. Uh, uh -huh. And so they they'd see me getting dressed because my photographer was gay. I mean, he didn't care, and my designer was gay. They didn't care. Uh -huh. So they'd hold this sheet up while I changed my clothes. <laughs> 
And the girls would get mad at me. Like, I was like, girl, I'm not working like that kind of work. I'm working to get real coins, okay? <laughs> These are legitimate coins, not right. fat coins. So they were, okay. I don't know. It was a funny thing to remember. And then the next image is another one of you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was one of my first test shots, uh -huh. actually. So um, uh, I think that, yeah, that was one of my first test shots. And I want to say it was like test board. It was the name of the, the place or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But they kind of killed me with the makeup there. Uh -huh. They pounded on. You can tell it's 80s, right? Right, yeah, yes. Yeah, the yeah, hairstyle. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I always think my nose looks different because um, when I was in Paris, I actually think I broke my nose mm. um, on a bunk bed that was extended out on another bunk bed. Mm -hmm. I got up like this and mm -hmm. it, and it oh, for months, I was in sheer pain, mm -hmm. but I had no coverage at the time, and I didn't know where to go at the time, mm -hmm. so I just walked around like this pretty much uh, How for long months. How were you in months? Uh, well, I was there two years Oh, um, when I finally did go and stay, um, but uh, I didn't know, I still didn't know stuff yet. I mean, mm -hmm. my French was <laughs> very bad mm -hmm. at that time, enough to get me by, but still wasn't good. Right. I eventually learned and uh, figured good. it out, but I still never navigated the health system. I mean. You know, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. go figure. But my nose now, if you look at that picture and look at me, you'll be like, your nose looks different. I did not have surgery. I've never had any surgery, as you can tell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but and that's there's the why. comedian coming out, right? It is. I can't help myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. I believe there's one more image. Oh, oh that's the book. book. Yes. yes, the book. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yeah, the yes, and book. reasons. I mean, you know. The book, uh, in link to comedy, uh, I always, you know, I tell youth that I meet daily because I go around speaking to kids mm -hmm. that you know laughter and humor is a way to get through anything, right. literally anything. My mm -hmm. brother died; it was the end of the world for me. Like you could mm -hmm. not tell me that was not the last day. Right. Uh, I don't know how I got through that, but it took me five years to come out of that depression. Mm -hmm. But I finally got through it, and it was with laughter. I started doing stand-up comedy five years ago. Mm -hmm. And if someone would have told me to get a dog, I would have got a dog instead, because that yeah. also helps you. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, between the comedy and writing, um, so I wrote this book, and I'm writing screenplays and stuff. All that has helped me mm -hmm. um, just stay um, a better human being, I'll say. Uh, mm -hmm. In spite of what has happened to me, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not angry. I don't, you know, I teach kids anger is just a waste of energy, yeah. such a waste. If I would have known that when I was 16, 15, my God, my life would have been, you know, even more amazing, as mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I say. But, you know, God has things to happen to you in time, and mm -hmm. you have reasons. And I guess uh, I was the chosen one because mm -hmm. I could deal with it right. and move it to a good place yeah. for someone else to help someone else. Mm -hmm. So. So Natan, you say you mentioned God. Mm -hmm. So who or what is God to you? Well, uh, it is a, um, I don't think it's something tangible. Because mm -hmm. um, if it was, it'd be a girl. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, How about it but, be a female and a male, or female and male energy? Nah, it would be oh. a girl. Okay. Be a girl, I would think. It has to be a girl. <laughs> There's no way it could be male. Okay. I mean, come on. It's like, I, I actually have jokes, but I'm not going to tell you about those. My, mm -hmm. my uh, Garden of Eden jokes. Um, but I just think it's a, um, it's a form, um, uh, not form of energy, a higher being, okay, a higher being uh, that, that guides you hmm, toward your destiny and shelters you and protects you uh, with all the chaos that goes around while you're trying to reach your destiny. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going to go with that for 500 bob. <laughs> I like that. Yes. Yeah, that's a nice description, a yeah. pretty good description. Yeah. So that's what you hold on to, hold on always to. Have, good. Always have. I don't, I mean, people say to me, write down what, how did you get through the abuse? How did you get through this? Because I was told I was ugly, stupid, and worthless for, for years. I've heard people you know? say that, yeah. Uh, so, you know, you would think I'd be like, Ugh. and I, my confidence level is, eh. now it's at a 10, but it wasn't always at a 10. Mm. Uh, and, and that's, that was why. Uh, but but modeling, comedy, um, and my gay friends uh, got me through, mm. uh, got me through um, the mental damage that can happen after something like that. It's like mm. a mental, you know, you could really have a mental breakdown. Uh, but if you protect your mind and you believe in something other than yourself, right? Um, you know, you can get through anything. I mean, look at the people that survived slavery and the Holocaust. I mean, who am I? <laughs> You know, mm. I, I have to really 
look back. I mean, I studied psychology and I, you know, did all the things to figure out what happened and how do we place this somewhere that's safe and healthy, you know. Mm. Um, but when you look back, and I, I look at my ex-mother-in-law telling me stories, uh, you know, about the Holocaust and mm. people tell me about slavery and, you know, even Jim Crow era. Right. And I'm like, they survived that. What am I complaining about? Yeah, we have to put things in perspective. You have sometimes. to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and we're human beings. That's why we go through all these things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know anybody who gets through this life unscathed. I'd You're like right for someone 100 to come and tell me. <laughs> I've never went through any problem in my life. Everything's good. Never had the death in my life. Right. Never had. I mean, really? Yes. Really. You know, Correct. You haven't Correct. lived. You need another 100 to go back, <laughs> back over that. Because I, I think this is a big lesson mm -hmm. when we're born. Yeah. Uh, not, not bad or good. Just, mm -hmm. just, just an experience. Right. Uh, and I do believe now, I never believed before, but I do believe there probably is an afterlife. I, I don't know where that comes from, but I'm starting to think, yeah, because there's people you meet and you're like, I know you, mm, sure. and, and they're yeah. like, no, you don't. <laughs> but you feel, <laughs> yeah, like your every being feels like you know them. Sure. Why is that? Babies look at you like you're their mom. Yeah. And I think maybe she knew me the last life when I was a queen, and right. I treated her well. You know, <laughs> I think I was a queen in the last life, by the way. Okay. Yeah. 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 And so it's. <laughs> You're talking to somebody who, who has uh, believes in that okay. and uh, have experienced it. Okay. And um, yeah, sometimes I had I had a wonderful um, uh, experience with a baby that it was like the baby that the mother said the child never does that. Wow. And the child came to me. She was uh, we was on the beach in Barbados, mm -hmm. and the child came to me. Well, because she wanted to get changed and whatever, sat with me, looked in my face, didn't cry, didn't do. She said. He <laughs> never does that. And so, like you said, why, you. why does that happen? He knew you. Well, babies just yes. came out of the past life, remember? Exactly. So the younger they are, the more clarity good. that they have. Exactly. I mean, I, I'm totally convinced. I saw a baby who was only like, not even a week old. Mm -hmm. This baby opened his eyes and went just like this and looked dead at me. I'm telling you. And I said to the mother, I said, is it me? She was like, no, she's never... See? Even like did that. I said, exactly. she's looking at me like she's waiting for me to say something or remember her. Or, mm -hmm. And so I started talking to her like like we knew. I said, do you remember me from the past life? Oh, and she so went, lovely. she'd give a half smile, <laughs> dimple, you know, baby goo goo gaga, <laughs> you know, gummy. What a wonderful experience. And I was like, okay, let's try this again. Do you know me from the past life? And she kept responding. Oh, So I was wow. like, I know she does. I know yeah. it. I've done it with animals. Mm -hmm. uh, if that they know too, me. That too, yes. Uh -huh. I could be crazy, but I'm going to take you're that. You're not from... crazy. I'm with you on that yeah, one. Good. And you're not the only one that feels that way. There's many people out there that have had experiences mm -hmm. and actually believe that because... Yeah. Um, it's wonderful. Once you know that, it makes things a lot easier. Yes, and you can deal of, with energies I'm easier. I'm telling you, like yes. when you see all these things with these children, yes. look at all these children that are coming now. Yes. They're all coming with these skills and yes. gifts. Three-year-olds playing piano. Yes. Like they've been around for 50 years. Absolutely. And so you've got to say, it's got to be more than just like they've got this talent. Yes. Where does this talent come from? Yes. And so I tell people, look, these are just old souls coming back. That's, that's it. What Recycled it is. souls. <laughs> exactly. So they're coming back to play their part, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And just finish what they didn't finish Absolutely. before. Absolutely. And so it's just a wonderful. And that's why I don't get. Um, I'm not concerned about death anymore. No, me neither. Yeah. Why be concerned about it? No, because you'll be back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so there's nothing to be concerned about. As you said, this body, just nothing. Nothing. Absolutely And nothing. so they say in the Bible, is it, earth to earth, dust to dust? That's right. That's it. Yes. And so it goes back to the elements, and the soul journeys on and gets another body. Isn't That's that wonderful? It. That's it. I love it. I just hope I'm not like a frog or something. <laughs> no, 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 that doesn't happen. Because if you think of it, this intellect is not the same right. as a human being. Right. So how could you come back as an animal? Because an animal know. can't think I'm like a human sure. being. You don't think? No, an animal well, can't I'm glad think to like a that. human being. I wouldn't mind being my dog, though. Because <laughs> that dog is treated so good. Happen. My dog, Duke, is, I'm telling you, he's got a good life. Mm. Even the vet was like, what are you doing to this dog? All he does is smile. <laughs> so if I came back as him, mm. with me as the owner, hey, this could work nah. out. <laughs> can I get a double duty? <laughs> I'm saying, Lord, can I get a, you know, the do-over? But I want it with, can I double up as me mm. and the dog owner? You know. I'm glad you've opened yourself up to that because it does make things a lot easier in life. It does. 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you can, um, it helps you with people's energies because everybody's yes, it energy. Does. Yes. Good, negative, or positive. That's right, it. Right, exactly. You know, um, mm -hmm. And so when you f run across a negative energy, you can actually you can understand think it. about, yeah. wow. They went through so much in that past life. Exactly. They're, they're not going to get it right or this something life. That you, it is, you and that, that soul had some kind of interaction mm -hmm. in the past. It's like sometimes you feel it, it's like, whoa. Yes, and I try to clean it up. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, I've tried to clean it up. Some people don't want to and they don't get it. Mm. Like uh, someone today, that they just kept grilling me and grilling me and grilling me. Now I'm trying to say, well, don't worry about it, dear. Nice, Aww. nice, nice, happy face. And they keep going on and on and on. They just, they're so into their junk that they can't see right. that, yes, you know me from past life and we can work this out. Like even if That's it's a bully, great. it doesn't matter who it is, you can work it out if you, you can. stop. You know, as Once long as you nothing, understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As long as nothing involving kids being hurt, I'm there good. There you go. Right, I can forgive right. you for anything. Right. Literally. Mm -hmm. You know. I've had wonderful experiences like that where someone would say, oh, I'm so glad to see you. And I said, yeah, me too. We just <laughs> hug each other, like first time meeting. Wow. And so it's just like this wonderful energy of, yeah, I'm glad to see you again. Yeah, well, that's like you. You have that energy. Thank you. I think it's you, because I thought I knew you from somewhere too. Oh, well, there may be. You, you have that, that uh, je ne sais quoi, as they call it, okay. something about you. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm, okay, quite an interesting topic we've gone on there. I appreciate that. <laughs> Anyway, we're getting close to the end. You also do um, hosting of a show, right? Yes, on mm -hmm. the town, Sundays at 5.30, um, different channels uh, in Westchester, so, you know, 54, 74. Right. But, uh, yeah, I host, uh, we've been on hiatus mm -hmm. because my cameraman moved to Florida. Okay, <laughs> So okay. I'm a little sad. You'll be back soon. Yeah, we've mm -hmm. been podcasting, though. Okay, on great. Sundays, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Lovely. Yeah. Great. Plus, so many mediums out here, uh, there's no reason why not to do what you love. Exactly. You know. So, any last minute words, uh, Tanya? Well, no, but I do thank you so much for having me on the show. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, for uh, we do have a drop off um, donation. Oh, yes, I right. forgot about that. Mm -hmm. December, uh, up until December 1st, anyone can drop off. Um, back to school um, supplies okay. like paper, mm -hmm. stickies, pens, paper, paper uh, at a Starbucks across from the train station in Mount Kisco, South okay. Mosier, lovely, or at Mount Kisco Public Library. Okay, great. Uh, and they can drop off. We have a drop box there, mm -hmm. uh, and then we pack the back boxes the first week of December and send it to the kids at college, or we hold it till some of them, a few want it held till mm -hmm. they get home, or we drive it to them. Okay. So it depends, uh, but that has toiletries. And back to school items, scarves, Excellent. gloves, Wonderful. socks. Good, uh, so good. if you need more information, they can email us as okay, well. Okay, so you want to mention the email and the website again, mm -hmm. please? Um, Foster Kids Unite mm -hmm. Inc. Inc. Dot com. Mm -hmm. um, and our website's www.fosterkidsuniteinc at uh, Foster Kids Unite Inc. at um, the Gmail gmail.com <laughs> website and, you know. see there's that memory coming back it's a word twister <laughs> <laughs> okay Tony so thank you I really appreciate thank you coming so much on, for having being me so candid and your wonderful book thank you yeah that Surviving people need Foster to go Care. out there and buy and they can yes. get it on Amazon. Amazon yes there you go yes. lovely okay Please. thank you Tanya thank you very much so for having me thank you thank my wonderful viewers for yes. tuning in so to the wonderful viewers your level of consciousness is the gateway to the future thank you Thank you.